We all get a bit of joy when animals take time out of their day to have a little fun. Seeing puppies tumble over one another, birds roll around in the snow, it just makes your heart melt. And I have great news for you. You can add another adorable example to the list of animals that play. According to a study made available online last month in the journal Animal Behavior, bumblebees know how to have a good time, too. Defining an animal behavior as play can be tricky, because it's not like they're going to tell us that they're playing. So researchers have sort of settled on five criteria a behavior needs to meet to be considered play. For example, the animal can't be doing it to achieve an obvious goal, like obtaining food, and they have to be observed doing it more than once. So, in a study published back in 2017, one research lab based in the UK trained a group of bumblebees to move a ball to a specific location in exchange for a sugar Treat. While that was not an example of bees playing, the researchers did notice that their bees would sometimes roll the balls around for no reward. And if they weren't doing that for any obvious reason, maybe the reason was play. So the lab set up a new series of experiments for what might be the cutest study we've ever heard of. Now the bees could choose to roll the balls around only if they wanted to. But why might they want to roll a bunch of balls around? Bumblebees need to be both mentally and physically sharp in order to get at the nectar and pollen and all those flowers that they visit. But bees aren't born experts. It takes practice for them to hone their flower-handling abilities. So they might not roll a bunch of balls around because it makes them happy, but to improve their motor and problem-solving skills. Either way, scientists would consider that a form of play. In their first experiment, 45 bumblebees took their turn inside a box with food on one end and a bunch of balls along the walls. This was to test whether the bees would go out of their way to stop and play with the balls or just make a beeline for the food. And every single bee did roll at least one ball before making it to their snack. One bee did it 44 times in a single day. Was that the greatest day in that bee's life or what? They also noticed an age-related trend in the bees' behavior. Younger bees were more likely to roll the balls than older bees. That mimics what scientists have observed in many other species. Juveniles tend to engage in play more often than their adult counterparts. In another experiment, the bees had to pass through both yellow and blue-colored chambers, which either did or did not have balls in order to reach their food. Eventually, the bees would learn to associate a certain colored chamber as the ballroom. So for half of the bees, the yellow chamber had balls and the blue one didn't, and for the other half it flipped. After training was complete, the setup changed. The bees were presented with a choice. They could choose to enter the yellow or blue chamber, but not see if either had balls in it. And generally speaking, the bees preferred to go into whichever chamber they had learned was the ballroom. That suggests that they were actively looking for some balls to play with. Now, while the researchers couldn't reveal whether bumblebees play with balls for pure enjoyment or because they want to practice some life skills, the study does provide the first evidence that not just bees, but insects more generally, will play with objects. And hey, whether or not bumblebees play because they want to have fun, humans can definitely have fun watching the adorable videos of them doing it. Speaking of animals that play, our next story is about a particular kind of corvid, the family of birds that includes crows, jays, and a bunch of others. Past research has shown that corvids love to have a good time. But a study published this week in the journal Philosophical Transactions of the Royal Society B has revealed that corvids can also have incredible self-control. Corvids like to stash their food away for another day. This means they have some ability to resist gobbling up the food that they just collected. And like a kid hiding their Halloween candy from a snacky parent, corvids must also wait until no one is looking to stash their food so that other birds can't raid their hiding spot. So researchers believe that corvids have evolved some level of self-control. And one team wanted to understand how that self-control is linked to the bird's intelligence. So to test it, they gave 10 Eurasian jays a version of the marshmallow test. Generally speaking, this test has a human child choose between receiving one marshmallow now or two if they're able to wait for a bit. And then they have to wait that bit out with the one marshmallow there in front of them, silently tempting them. But marshmallows, it turns out, aren't really a corvid idea of a treat, so this study had to use something a little bit more appetizing. The birds were initially offered a tasty cube of bread or cheese from an open drawer. But inside a closed drawer, they could see the preferred treat, mealworms. The researchers varied how long that drawer would stay closed, between 5 seconds and 5 minutes and 20 seconds. And both humans and birds 
waited. In the end, all ten Jays were able to exert some level of self-control and hold out for the mealworm, although some did way better than others. For example, there's a female named Jaylo, like J-A-Y-L-O. She was capable of waiting as long as she needed to get her mealworms. Meanwhile, the two most impatient Jays could not wait longer than 20 seconds. They also had the Jays perform several tasks to assess their intelligence from an ecological perspective. Basically, how good they were at applying what they learned about their environment to change their behavior. And in general, the Jays that performed better on these intelligence tasks were also better at waiting out the timer for their mealworm prize. That makes the study the first to demonstrate a link between self-control and intelligence in birds. And hey, maybe one day we will learn that bumblebees have some self-control of their own, too. Self-control is great and all, but if you get swept up in a hobby like pin collecting and you just can't control yourself by buying every pin in SciShow Space Collection, that is also great. These pins make you happy, and they support SciShow, so it's a win-win. The concern is that you would need a place to put all of those awesome pins, and that's the problem we have solved with the new SciShow Space Pin Board. It has a cool design of the solar system, and you can put all those pins, which each represent a different spacecraft, where they actually exist in space! You can find it at dftba.com slash SciShow. Show. And for all of you non-pin collectors out there who are just as eager to support SciShow, you can also do that at patreon.com slash SciShow. Thank you all so much for your support and for enjoying this episode, which I did a lot. I hope you liked it as much as I did. 